All right, we're gonna look at a pretty cool use of uh, shooting charged particles into magnetic fields um, called mass spectrometry. Um, just to introduce this, a pretty simple scenario. It says an electron uh, travels east at 100 meter per second. So let's just draw an electron going to the east here, uh, 100 meter per second. And then it says that a 0.25 Tesla field that points upward is switched on. So we'll say there's a magnetic field suddenly that uh, points uh, out of this page or out of the board. And I'm gonna indicate it going out of the board by drawing it with these little dots. Uh, as you remember, we tend to use X's, let's say for something going into the board, like the tail feathers, the fletching on an arrow. But now it's coming out of the board, so that's like the tip of the arrow coming toward you. Um, so this is a um, 0.25 Tesla field coming out. And so you have a charged particle moving perpendicular to a field, so that's gonna make a magnetic force. Since it's an electron, let's use like a left-hand rule. You got the velocity of the thing this way, the field coming out, so the force on it was, is gonna be uh, up this way to the north. And so if we draw the particle when it's here, right at this instant then, um, right at this instant when its velocity is that way, the magnetic force then that's gonna be acting on this thing is gonna be like this. Okay, so there's our, there's our magnetic force, I'll call it F mag, right? Well, so since the particle's moving to the right and there's a, uh, uh, to the east and there's a northward force on it, if we drew that particle an instant later, um, it would be somewhere over here. To the right because it's already moving and northward a bit because of the magnetic force. Um, so then the direction of the velocity of the particle at this point would then be something like this, right? Because it's, it's been pushed in that direction by the magnetic force. Well, let's repeat our like left-hand rule here to get the direction of magnetic force. So you have the particle moving this way, the field that comes out, now the magnetic force is that way, still perpendicular to the motion. And so what you have developing here is this magnetic force that's always gonna be perpendicular to the direction of motion. Um, and so that leads to a curving motion or circular motion. Um, so the path of this particle, it's gonna look like this, right? So if we draw it kind of one more place here, up here its, it's velocity is gonna be essentially that way. So I'm gonna draw right over my writing there. And if you say uh, traveling this way, velocity is that way, fields out. So the magnetic force is gonna be this way. So this magnetic force, um, this is all the magnetic force written in red. So if we wanna calculate the strength of that magnetic force, um, goes like this, F mag is Q V perp B, but all of the velocity is perpendicular to the field, so it's really just Q times V times B. Um, so let's just plug in some numbers. So the charge on an electron is Q, that happens to be this many coulombs, 1.602 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs. Um, electrons have negative charge, but I'm suppressing the sign here because we already know the direction of the force. Um, and so I'm just finding the strength of the force. Um, the V perp is 100. And the field itself is a quarter Tesla. 0.25. So it looks like we just have to do 25 times this number. Um, so you get this tiny force, 25 times 1.602. So you get uh, 40.05 times 10 to the minus 19 newtons. So not a very huge force, but electrons are really light. So you'll see that this will bend the heck out of it, right? So this is your magnetic force on a moving charge. Now a conceptual thing that's important here to think about is imagine throwing a heavier charged particle into, into the field. Um, so like a fluorine ion instead of an electron. So electron is really light, but if you throw a fluorine uh, ion in there, which is much, much heavier, um, then what's gonna happen, right, is the thing's gonna be harder to bend. So the um, negatively charged particle that's light will bend up with a certain radius. The heavier negatively charged particle will be harder to bend, so it'll bend with a bigger radius, right? So that's gonna go farther out. So the heavier the particle is, the, um, the larger its radius of curvature will be. And so that's a way to sort particles by mass. The heavier ones would curve and land or end up way out here somewhere. 
if this were a positively charged particle, it would simply bend the other way. So this apparatus is neat by throwing a, a particle into a magnetic field. If they go through straight, that means they were uncharged. Bending this way means negative charge. Bending this way means positive charge. And then the radius with which they bend shows you how heavy the particle is. So, so that's called a mass spectrometer, right? So um, let's connect this to the radius of curvature. Um, so what you can do is by running F equals MA, uh, sum of the forces is MA, um, really the magnetic force is the significant one that's on this thing. Uh, so the magnetic force is QVB. Of course we have the numbers for it already, but I'm just going to do this in terms of symbols. Um, equals mass times. Now the thing is being bent in a circle, and so this magnetic force is providing the centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R. And so what we can do with this is solve for the radius of curvature, which tells you how sharply it bends. Um, so let's just solve for the, for the R. Well, you'll see one of the Bs cancels, or Bs rather, here. Um, and then what we'll do is bring the R over and the QB under. So you'll get R equals MV over QB. This is the radius of curvature, right? So again, notice that if you have a heavier particle, it's going to bend with a larger radius of curvature. Um, if it were traveling faster, it would also bend with a larger radius of curvature. Um, larger charge actually makes it bend sharper, so the more charge that's on the thing. And then obviously making a larger magnetic field will, um, larger magnetic field will make it bend sharper. Okay. So the neat thing with this, again, I, it will sort particles by, um, by mass. So for example, if you could ionize like a, say you're trying to separate isotopes of uranium by, uh, uh, you have uh, U-235 and U-238 somehow in, in, a, in a gaseous phase, you, you would ionize it and a, a uranium-235 particle might bend with a radius like this. So I'm gonna put U-235. Right? But a U-238 that's slightly heavier might bend out here like this. So there's U-238. So this is a way to sort particles by mass. This would be assuming you had put a positively charged, uh, you had taken one of the electrons away so that it was a, a positively charged ion, okay, that it would bend this way. Negatively charged ions would bend the other way. Um, so a very, very important thing called a mass spectrometer. It sorts particles not only by charge based on which way they go, but you can sort them based on the mass and then simply move a, you could either move a collection cup out this way, which would let you know what mass things are, or more commonly, you leave the collection cup in place and just fine tune the field. And based on how strong the field is, um, you can also calculate how much mass um, the particle has. So this is called a mass spectrometer. Um, for the specific case of this electron, let's, uh, with this tiny force on the electron, let's figure out what its radius of curvature would be. Um, so the radius of curvature in this case would be, well, why we need the mass of the electron. Um, electrons are tiny, 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kgs. They're very light, very easy to push around. Um, velocity here is 100 meter per second, which is not very fast for an electron. Um, even though it's fast for a baseball or something. Um, the charge in the electron we already found, 1.602 times 10 to minus 19, and then that field was a quarter Tesla. Um, right, that's Coulombs, that's Tesla. Um, and so then that's gonna give us the radius of curvature. Um, so just kind of punching that in really fast. 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 uh, times divide by 0.25 divide by 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 we get like 2 times 10 to the I think it's 2 nanometers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 yeah 2 nanometers 2 times 10 to the minus 9 about 2 times 10 to the minus 9 meters about two nanometers. So a few uh, 
six atomic diameters or so, uh, the, the radius of curvature of this thing. So it bends really sharply. Um, this is quite a large field, and like I say, electrons are very light and easy to push around.